How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Thursday here on the show. You know what that means? We got a lot to talk about. Yesterday was AEW Dynamite, and a lot happened on the show. I thought the show was largely excellent, although I did have a couple of qualms. Maybe qualm is the wrong word, but we'll give you the big stories coming out of the show later on here today. We got lineups for the Collision and Rampage show, as well as SmackDown on Friday. And, of course, all of the news. Roadblock ratings from the NXT show on Wednesday. Mike Tyson. I still can't believe. We don't talk about a lot of... MMA and and that sort of thing, but Mike Tyson is going to fight Jake Paul in July. Mike Tyson is going to fight Jake Paul in July. He's 58 years old. It's 2024. So we'll tell you about that, as well as more on Sting's retirement. Kevin Nash, of course, said that he was asked about, uh, or he asked about attending Sting's final match. WWE told him no. That's what Kevin Nash said. And uh, meanwhile, Lex Luger asked WWE, and they said yes. They had a couple of requirements, but he was there, as we talked about a couple of days ago. We'll talk about business for that show, as well as AW Big Business, which is coming up here in a week. And uh, a bunch of other news as well. We will open with the... Daniel Rodimer's story, another horrible story involving pro wrestling, and uh, he has turned himself in, wanted for murder. He, of course, a former Tough Enough contestant and had worked some matches for WWE. So a lot to get into after the break. Observer Live. We've almost reached the pinnacle of the tour, but this is one of the most important things. This is the computer. This is the workstation where I do the majority of the actual physical part of putting figure four together. I do the writing here, the editing here, of course, the phone calls, um, even the uh, microphone here when we used to do Wrestling Observer Live, which has since died. And uh, in fact, I better put the uh, screensaver on here so this doesn't get burned in the screen. But Putting the newsletter together, people understand, is it's a lot of hard work and dedication, like two to three hours per week sometimes I have to spend on it. And, um, hold on a second. Figure four, who's this? Carl Thrillo? Yeah. Yeah, hey, 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 listen, can I, can I call you back? I'm, I'm doing something here right now. My fridge? Yes, Renny. Hello? Anyway, um, this is, uh, like I said, computer, got the TV here, this is pretty much the place. This is going to be a quick tour of the trophy room. This is actually my trophy case, it's made of mahogany, very expensive. But what is worth far more than the case itself is what is inside, and that is the medals from the various sports and the accomplishments that I've achieved during my lifetime. This first drawer here is my gymnastics medal. Here, I got uh, state and such. These are my Taekwondo medals. These down here, amateur wrestling medals. And down here are the 26 medals that I won in the five kilometer walk down to the Boffa Landing over the course of the past five years. And, um, you know, I realize that uh, I'm a four sports superstar right here. And some people, you know, it might, uh, might bother them that they haven't had such achievements in their life. But I think that the whole point is that you can achieve anything. You know, if you can make a great pie, you can win the pie eating contest at the uh, Puyallup Fair. And, uh, I don't know. Hell, if you can eat a good pie, you might win the pie eating contest as well. So there's there's achievement in this life for everybody.
Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Daniel Rodimer has turned himself in to the Clark County Detention Center in Nevada after a warrant was issued for his arrest earlier on Wednesday. Daniel Rodimer, Tough Enough Season 4 contestant, later wrestled under the name Dan Rodman on house shows and several episodes of Heat. Warrant issued in relation to the homicide of a 47-year-old Christopher Tapp at Resorts World Las Vegas, October 29, 2023. Tapp's cause of death, blunt force drama to the head. The Vegas police released a statement saying a suspicious death was now being investigated as a homicide. Update, suspect identified. Through the course of the investigation... Homicide detectives were able to identify 45-year-old Daniel Rodimer as the suspect in this case. On November 22, 2023, Las Vegas homicide was made aware of a suspicious death occurred. October 29, 2023, Las Vegas Boulevard. Medical personnel responded to a call for service regarding a male, later identified as 47-year-old Christopher Tapp, suffering from injuries as a result of a purported accident. Tap was transported to the hospital, was later pronounced deceased. Through the course of the suspicious death investigation, homicide detectives learned Tap was in an altercation inside a room at a resort before being transported to the hospital. Clark County Coroner's Office has ruled Tap's death a homicide. And of course, they say anybody with any information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the thing with this story is this all happened at a party. And there were multiple witnesses and the witnesses I mean they they were texting each other about what happened the police ended up with the uh, text messages and it was made very clear that according to the witnesses there was an issue and Rodimer stormed into the room and uh, and uh, brutally beat Tap so uh, you know this is Appears to be a lot of evidence here, but of course, we'll see what happens. Rodimer wrestled with WWE 2004 to 2007, following season four of Tough Enough. At one point, there were plans for him to be involved with Edge and Randy Orton as a member of Rated RKO. Stephanie was very high on him. He was 6'7 and 300, blonde, and I thought, man, this guy is a can't miss. And in fact, he, uh, he did miss. And then he ran for political office. And uh, we talked about it. Well, Dave did on the show. I never actually saw the commercials, but this they this were goofy. This was an example of a total worker trying to work people as he ran for office. Fake Southern accent, which he, he never carpet, had before. Carpet bagged his, his accent. That was something else. So yeah, that's the yeah. update. Another horrible pro wrestling story. Well, if we haven't had enough of those. An update to that update, which is he's walking around because he, he did post himself, bail. Yeah, he turned himself into the Las Vegas Metro Police and then posted the $200,000 or whatever percentage he needed to post of that bond to get out. So there you go. So that's the uh, that's the story. And uh, when we hear more, we'll let you know. But walk in the streets right now. Walk yeah. in the streets. All right. Well, we got a lot to talk about here today, and uh, a lot of it involves AW. It's amazing what happens when you have money, isn't it? Well, yeah. You can hit that bail that a lot of other people wouldn't. Well, There's actually, they, I mean, the bail wasn't even that high. There. I forget what the number was, but it was like twenty thousand or something like that. Well, that's it. It yeah, wasn't I mean, like a million dollars. No, two hundred thousand dollar bond. If you had to post ten percent, there you go. So it's just it's wild. Well. I would say that Dynamite had some real highs. I would not say it had any real lows. Uh, there was nothing that I would say would be really low. But there were there were a couple of things. And uh, I may as well get out of the way first. Hey, let's see, want to turn the, if you want to turn the show off, do it. But it's a broken record. Dude, we need to sell some tickets. It's like, it's so glaring when you look at how successful Sunday's pay-per-view was. Dude, that pay-per-view did so well. They sold so many pay-per-views. They sold so many tickets. Everybody is raving about the show. It was like way, way up here. And then we got Collision tonight. 
which is like at, at 1,400 tickets. 1,400 tickets. I don't know at that level. Yes, it would help if you announced matches for sure, but my God, 1,400 is a surprise. That is exceptionally low to me. It just, I don't know. That stands out like a sore thumb. Well, it, it, well, it does, and but I mean, they have not been doing, for television, their, their numbers are not good. No. It's like their pay-per-views do great, and then there's the next day. And yes, I know next week is doing well, okay? But it's 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 at, you know, I think a little over 6,000. And fact of the matter is they've been promoting it forever, and there's really only two options. Number 1, Mercedes doesn't mean all that much. She obviously means something for her debut in in Boston, but it's not like, you know, you're doing 16,000 or anything close. So either she doesn't mean all that much or People haven't gotten the hint with the B O dollar sign dollar sign T O N. It's it's one or the other, okay? And the thing yesterday that uh, that I just could not understand is why couldn't you advertise that you signed Okada and he was going to debut on the show? I I, I know the angle, okay? I watched the angle, I liked the angle, okay? But you could have done the exact same angle. If you would have advertised that Okada was debuting on the show. And in fact, the angle probably would have been a little bit better. Because if you had the Young Bucks beating up Eddie Kingston. And everybody knew that Okada was debuting on the show. And they started chanting for Okada. First off, the pop would have been bigger when the coin dropped. And then it actually would have been more surprising probably. When he ended Like they could have done the exact same angle. And... If you would have announced a week or two in advance that uh, Okada was going to be on the show, you'd have done way more than 3,000 tickets for the show. You probably would have done a better rating for the show. I can't think of any conceivable reason why the Okada debut had to be a surprise. And honestly, at this point, with with 6,000, almost 7,000 tickets out, whatever the exact number is for big business, I don't have any idea why you haven't just told people Mercedes is coming next week. Because Mercedes did an interview, and I think even she thinks that they should be announcing she's going to be there. Because she, in the interview, basically said, I've been working on some big business. Like, I don't know, man. Well, If it works, it works. CM Punk yeah. thing worked. It worked brilliantly. 16,000, 17,000, whatever they... But, you know, a week or two before, announce it. Sell some tickets. And... I don't want to hear that I'm the bad guy. I don't want to hear this. I've been hearing this from multiple people there. Why aren't we advertising stuff? Why aren't we selling tickets to these shows? Collision is today. They had zero matches for Collision until yesterday. Zero. Yesterday when we did this show, they had zero matches announced for a show they wanted to sell tickets to on Thursday. I don't care if you think it's a broken record. I don't care if you want to turn the show off. Like... Something's going on here. Clearly, they're doing fine on pay-per-view, partially because they're adva- they're announcing cards far in advance. Look at the lineup for this pay-per-view. It's not official, but this April pay-per-view, we got Brian Danielson and Will Ospreay. We got Okada and Eddie Kingston. Like, dude, they're going to sell a ton of tickets, and they're going to do a ton of buys. You could do that for television. I don't know why they don't. I don't have an answer to this question. But it's frustrating to me because there's 1,400 tickets for a collision show today. 1,400. The wrestlers deserve better. The fans want to know so they can go to the show. I don't get it. Back in a moment, Observer Live. You know, that was a very special night for me. Um... And I've listened to Cody about it. It's not one of his, it's not his top match, he says, but man, it's mine. You know what I mean? It's uh, very special in my heart. And to do that at 50, right, is uh, it's just a, it's a great achievement for somebody like me, man. It really is to be in my kind of my, st- my shape still in good shape to be able to go out there with the young, young kids and pull things off. Um, it's, it's so amazing. You know, when I was so nervous, 
when we, you know, Cody's music hit and he broke the throne with a sledgehammer and all that, I'm just waiting for my, my entrance, right? And this new upstart company, AEW, I didn't know how the fans would respond to me, uh, whether they would boo me or whether they would, you know, cheer me or whatever. So I'm so nervous and I'm so laser focused on what I'm doing, but it, it was like, God, my butterflies in my stomach were crazy. My music hit and they responded in kind. And I was like, okay, it's not so bad. And I'm always like that. As soon as I go through the tunnel, it goes away. Right. And then I'm laser focused on what I need to do, man. And it's like, it was good to feel that reaction from the, a new fan base. that had watched me my whole career, but they're different than WWE fans to go down there. And, you know, um, I've explained this before, and it's, let's see if you can understand it. I step in the ring, right, and they start chanting Dusty's name, right, which really just, oh, man, you know, chills on your on your body. You're in the moment. You're so laser focused, and you hear that for a moment because I point to the, to the sky. I point up, and they started to chant Dusty, and then all of a sudden, the sound and everybody in the arena has become blurry to me, right? I can hear them, but I can't hear them. I can see them, but I can't. I'm so focused on Cody and what we need to do right now to get it to where it is. Because for years and years, I was told, no, it wasn't good enough to be on WrestleMania or whatever. So we had a thing to prove here and I was focused about it. And we probably could have done a couple things wrong in that match and it still wouldn't have mattered. It was so good. The story was built in one promo a piece. They were ready for it. All the stars aligned, the magic happens and we struck lightning and it was really cool to do. And I think that match will go down in history as, as you know, one of the greatest matches of all time. You know, there's some great matches out there, but I think it really, it, it holds water. I think it, it's going to be talked about for 10 years from now, you know, 15, 20 years from now. just read <laughs> and responded uh, I did I went in there what am I doing why do I bother because you feel strongly about it boss that's that's the key that's the key when people get mad at me that makes me even more mad so, it's like I love AEW you realize that Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm the know. guy that people used to say was paid by Tony Khan I know and there's nothing worse than me remember, remember those uh, it used to be like a meme <laughs> I, I forget I don't know what it was but it was like Everything is fine. Oh yes, with the the dog and the fire yeah, in the whatever. background and whatnot. It, I'm sick of hearing everything is fine. Everything isn't fine. <sighs> and if I dare talk about how it's not fine, I get blowback. I want it to be better. Okay, I, I want it to be better. Well, it happened I, to me I, personally I, too. Like the last time they ran Seattle, it was like it was the same thing. It was should I even go to Collision? I don't know anything about this show. I was like, what am I doing? It's. Look, I know and you know why you know, also it's frustrating? Okay. Go All right. Ahead. I'll sit back. So ahead. listen, they had a Adjust. period with a bunch of injuries, okay? Bunch of people hurt, bunch of people out, okay? Well, there's nothing you can do about that, okay? There's just nothing you can do about that. But, like, I see 1,400 for collision, and my blood boils. Because it's this is not a situation where there's nothing that can be done about that, okay? And there's there's people in the company. Everybody has great ideas, Everybody has great ideas, and the great ideas aren't being done, okay? We still don't have, at the very least, okay, we don't know the lineup for Collision, but you know what? Here's gonna Who's going to be on the show? We'll tell you two weeks in advance. These people will be there. I, I don't know what matches there are going to be. Fine, but these are the people that will be there, okay? Uh, here's a big dark match you're going to see that you can only see if you go live. Hasn't happened. I mean, there's so much stuff that could make this all better. And it's just, we keep doing the same thing. Like, a year ago, two years ago, 
said this on the chat. If I told you two years ago, in March of 2024, the greatest wrestler in the world, who, by the way, isn't right now, it's Will Ospreay, but still, at the time, the greatest wrestler on earth, Okada, is going to leave New Japan. He's going to debut in AEW. But he's going to debut unadvertised on a dynamite that draws 3,000 fans. You would have said, dude, get out of here. Like, why do you have to be so negative? That's what you would have said a year ago, two years ago. Well, now it's happening, and people are like, is that bad? 3,000? Well, yeah, same market, same show. Dynamite in the same 5,000 last time. Over 5,000. They're down 2,000. Advertise Okada. Coming Advertise of stuff. That's that's a, yeah. a lot of what, why am I a bad guy? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I will just say I'm not in their sales and marketing department, but a lot of things what we talk about when it comes to them is sales and marketing and advertising. And why are they not as big as WWE right now? Why do their guys they don't have stars? They don't even need to the, be as big as WWE. Yes, they need to be but, as but big as they out. were. But hear me They out. should be doing 5000 for Dynamite. No, what they... Yes, they should be. And what they also should be doing is you have three debuts all coming in close proximity to each other with two, arguably, of the best wrestlers in the world. And I'm not insulting Mercedes Monet into this because certainly as far as fans go here and as far as name value goes... Mercedes Verando or whatever her real name is the the Mandalorian fans will know that but everybody else will know Sasha Banks and all that why are these three when wrestling is hot right now with WWE being hot which means wrestling is hot to the mainstream with mania season taking place with the fact that these three people are coming in why are you not getting these people onto more mainstream shows because that will not hurt you can have as many great matches in the world with as many great wrestlers as you want but if the product's not hot you have to get it hot and you have to get people invested into believing that these people they're going to see are stars and unfortunately they don't have that credibility right now because they don't have a flashlight on them wherever they go being treated like a lot of the wwe talent is and i'm not saying do everything the exact same way but if espn is being dominated by wwe right now can you use cbs sports network or your nfl or do something why have uh, again well Osprey, listen okada monage they should be listen. advertised in a more mainstream way because uh, yeah but you I, know what you're not wrong but okay let's say that they get these people over in the mainstream exactly as you as you said how does that help if i don't know if they're going to be on the show well, uh, everyone's what, talking about what is stacked together, everyone is together. talking about what a stacked episode of dynamite it was last night which is true it was a great show. It was full of stars. The roster is incredible. I can go through this report. They didn't advertise Swerve. They didn't advertise Samoa Joe. They didn't advertise Taven and Bennett and Adam Cole and Wardlow. They didn't advertise Hook. They didn't advertise Brian Cage. They didn't advertise the best friends, Kill Switch, Daddy Magic, Kyle O'Reilly, uh, they did announce Rio and Statlander. Didn't announce um, Switchblade. Didn't announce Darby. Uh, didn't announce Mark Briscoe. Didn't announce House of Black. Like it doesn't matter if these people are over. If you're in the area, you didn't know any of this stacked roster was going to be on the show. So what good does it do to g send Swerve to whatever? Send. I don't know if they're going to be on the show or not. They don't tell me. Yeah, That's Brian, the bigger problem. I know, but you're right. That is the, there again, there are two levels to this problem that we're talking about here. And I don't mean to be, you know, I don't want to battle it or anything like that. But with Swerve's story, you know it, right? You know everything he's been through. You know his military background. You know the independent wrestling that he's done. You know his outside interests, like when it comes to hip hop. You know this stuff. Everybody should know this stuff. I heard Swerve out in doing mainstream things more a couple of years ago when he signed. Why are we not hearing more about this dude? 
you know, MJF, they did a good job taking his outside things that he did, and they were rolling with him pretty good, even though the devil storyline sucked. You know, he was out there. Well, now he's hurt. He can't be out there. Use some other people and get them out there. It does not hurt. And when you're right now at the level that you're at where we have to talk about these things, there should be extra care taken to get these people, your top people, into as many places in the media as possible. And I know a lot of it is fake and all that sort of stuff, and we get driven nuts when WWE does it. But you know what? It's kind of what you have to do. Because you're not going to have... Look, there are going to be outlets that they're relatively shut out from. ESPN, they're relatively shut out from. You know, the Pat McAfee show, they're relatively shut out from. When Dan Levitard talks about it, when it comes to sports, who's he talking about? He's talking about WWE. That's They, they have got to get the AEW name back out there. And they have got to, again, put some shine on all of these people as well as doing what you're saying. Sting's retirement match, according to Venues Now... The show at the Greensboro Coliseum brought in more than a million dollars in gate revenue. 16118 The average ticket price, $55. $349,000 in merchandise sales. Average spend of $21.64. 306000 sent on spent on concessions. This thing can be way bigger than it is. Hey, look, we'll this see is what proof happens. right here. We'll see what happens when it comes to these pay-per-views and adding on so many of them. But when it comes to the big show, as we have said over and over, no matter the build on television, when it comes to what they get in pay-per-view buys, what they get when it comes to the gate and what they get when it comes to those speed people who step through the gate spending money, it is fantastic. Again, can they now, with so many pay-per-views, are they going to be able to continue in the same way? Obviously, they hope so. You know, that's where attendance is going to be the issue. Again, the fans that go are going to spend money. I think people are going to sit home and have no problem, even if you lose 40000 100000 you know, six more months out of the year. You know, that's going to be enough to cover that. But it, what is the atmosphere going to be like because again there is no reason that they should be getting 1400s for a collision i'm just sorry at aew's point with what they spend on everything that they have i'm sorry maybe it's just my age but i get those wcw flashbacks too much and i know it's not the same thing because as long as tony khan has money this promotion can exist but still it is not a great atmosphere when you have 1400 coming off of watching 16,000 in Charlotte there's got to be a happier medium Mercedes on the Kick Rocks podcast that's what she should tell you was asked about dude I'm on her side about ad- ad- advertising her for next week hater she uh they were she was asked about upcoming things she might be doing <laughs> she says i've been making some really big moves Big business moves. Well, she's and the boss. big money moves. She's money. In case you haven't figured out big business yet, <laughs> which I know well, some. People... Well, I mean, be honest though. How many tickets were going to be sold off of Mercedes Monet's name, Sasha Banks? Well, the name funny thing is, we don't game. know because they won't say her name. How many have been sold? I don't know. There's six thousand. Okay, so whatever they do for what have they been doing for regular shows? About two thousand, three thousand. Well, obviously so they're doing was, better, yeah. So she was worth about three thousand tickets right there. You know, her name alone probably could have done sold out New Japan show that she appeared at last year. But look, I just because we talked about this leading in because the the specter of Okada debuting was well, if ticket sales aren't going good, you can announce Okada to debut there as well as then feature Mercedes Monet. Now, obviously, they can't do that anymore, but they, I, to me, and this is nothing against her because I like her, how many people were was she really going to draw off of just her name in a building that size? That was cojones to think that. Back in a moment, Observer Live.
So this is an odd story. So Kevin Nash claimed that he asked WWE to attend Sting's final match. And he says that because of his positioning within WWE, quote, I couldn't even be there if I went in the crowd. That's what Kevin Nash said. Lex Luger, however, who has the same deal that Nash has, Luger said, and DDP, that WWE told them they could attend the show, but requested they not be on camera. And so they were there. So I don't know what's going on here, but um, Luger was definitely there, and uh, and WWE gave him permission. And as, as it notes here, you know, I, I guess Luger could clarify, but he didn't even say they demanded he not be on camera. They just said they would. They requested he not be shown. So, anyway, he was there. Yeah, well, considering how they treated that man on that old WWE confidential show way back when after Elizabeth passed away, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say that man couldn't do anything, especially in the condition that he's in right now, too. But uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. And maybe... Maybe there's possibly the reason why. Maybe they do want to do something with Lex Luger, so they may have not taken as hard of an edge with Lex Luger because maybe they do want to induct him into the Hall of Fame or something like that. I don't know. But uh, there you go. What would happen if they uh, put Luger in the Hall of Fame and, and requested Sting induct him? I wonder if AEW would let... I bet AEW would let Sting do it. I think You know, I think they would too, and I think under the circumstances... You know, you want to talk about a no-win for Tony Khan because they're going to be the same trolls that are out there if he lets them do it that say, well, you wouldn't get anything from them. Hell, you didn't even bother to ask for the footage. That's how, you know, you keep getting treated. But then if he doesn't let him go, I mean, my God, you know, you look like a monster in that case. So, you know, it's a, it's a really, again, he's in a no-win position there, you know, but I think to be on the right side of history, I think you let Lex Luger, especially in his condition, go do something like that, or let Sting go do that for a friend of his. So the Dynamite show had a lot going on and a lot of announcements. So it appears that the main event of the next pay-per-view is going to be Swerve and Samoa Joe for the title. And next week, it is going to be Joe versus Wardlow for the title. I suppose it's possible Wardlow wins, but I would be I would be surprised. I certainly would not say it's impossible, but I would be surprised. And as far as Swerve, I mentioned I mentioned on the show last night, and boy, people got really mad at my prediction. My prediction was that. Uh, that Adam Cole was going to be the man to beat Swerve. That's what I predicted. And people were furious about that. Because how, what? Listen, it's just a prediction, first off. You don't have to get mad about it. But why Why did I predict that? Well, I'll tell you. So, I don't know this 100%, but I'm I'm pretty confident that the whole MJF Adam Cole storyline was going to culminate at World's End with Adam Cole beating MJF for the title. And Adam Cole, of course, got injured, which screwed everything up. And as a result of that, MJF was always going to lose at World's End. And so with Adam Cole out of the picture, Samoa Joe got the title. Okay? Now, if you have watched AEW from day one, which I have, let's look at, like, the Chris Statlander deal. And, you know, it's been it's been multiple times. Tony has a plan for somebody to be champion and an injury or whatever occurs. And as soon as they're able to go, he goes right back to whatever his plan was. We've seen this countless times, okay? Countless times. So I don't know when Cole's going to be back. I mean, timing-wise, my my prediction may not work out because I think Will Ospreay should win the AEW title at Wembley, okay? But if he can be back at some point soon... I think that they're going to go with Adam Cole. 
And whatever the long term was with Adam Cole and MGF after Adam Cole won the title, I think he's going to go back to whatever his plan was. That's why I made that prediction. Now, obviously, if there's not time, then I think that Swerve will probably beat Joe. And then at Wembley, now you've got kind of a weird situation because it would be babyface versus babyface. Because Swerve, 100%, for all of you that told me that Swerve is already a babyface, he wasn't. Because he actually did his babyface turn last night. And now he is a babyface. And, of course, Will Ospreay is your, should be your top babyface. So, I mean, you could do babyface, babyface at uh, Wembley if you wanted. Or, you know, Swerve gets his run. Cole ends his title run. And then you do Cole and Osprey at Wembley, and uh, and Osprey wins the title. I'm just telling you what I think, okay? You don't have to get mad about it. Just giving you my my educated speculation based on watching Tony Khan book for the last four or five years. Next week, as noted, it is uh, it is Samoa Joe and Wardlow, and uh, man, I do have to say. That opening segment was the most WWE segment I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> they literally had Swerve and Samoa Joe come out, and they set up an impromptu match. The only thing we were missing was, uh, you know, Adam Pierce or Teddy Long to say, This match is official! And then what was the match? Two singles guys versus the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. Well, he and essentially, one Tony guy beat them both all by himself. That yeah. was a total... WWE segment, if I ever saw one. They had it with Tony Schiavone. He played that role. He out did, there, didn't he? Tony Schiavone <laughs> played uh, Teddy Long. Other notes on the show: We had uh, Hook and Brian Cage for the FTW title, and my presumption is that they're doing this AW Tag Team Tournament for the vacant titles. And my presumption is that Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara were going to be a team. And uh, and Sammy is currently suspended, and so Jericho needs a new partner, and so they set up an angle where his partner will be Hook. So Jericho and Hook fighting for the uh, AW Tag Team title, which is great for Hook. So uh, is the FTW title the tribute hardcore title? Really, when of it gets course. Down to it at the end of the day, of course. <laughs> it's FTW rules and all those matches. So they set that up. They uh, here's another one by the way here's another one I don't want to get back to it again but I didn't know Christian was going to be on the show I didn't know Nick Wayne was going to be on the show I didn't I, I didn't know Shayna and everybody else I, I understand maybe wanting to do a surprise with with Adam Copeland but my God the more I look at the show I'm like they didn't even they didn't advertise anybody the show was so stacked <laughs> and it was a, a complete money. mystery going in so Edge returned Adam Copeland. And he uh, he beat everybody up, and Christian's crew chased him out of the building. And they announced March 20th in Toronto, it will be I Quit, Copeland versus Christian for Christian's title. So I give them credit. Thank God you've announced that in advance. Plug the hell out of it over the next couple of weeks. It's Toronto, for God's sake. And you know what happens when AEW goes to Canada? What's that? Not good. They should do fine in Toronto, hopefully. Change the title. Well, of course they're going to change the title. It's long since time. Hope so. Yes. And then we get a mother shirt. Um. No. A mother shirt. Somebody said. Oh, am I going to get one? Shane Wayne gear and some new Shane Wayne uh, merchandise here, so you can have that mother drip hanging off of him every show. Shayna is so tall. God. <laughs> and then she wears those heels. It's great. I mean, she strikes a presence out there, does she not? My wife is exactly the same height as me, okay? And so, like, every now and then we'll go somewhere, and she decides she's going to wear these. She doesn't wear heels, but she wears, like, shoes with a high heel, like Platform. a big square heel yeah. or whatever. I am always looking up at her, and I'm like, okay, you're, you're now four inches taller than me. But then I think about Buddy, and it's like, this happened to him every day, but she was a foot taller. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> because Buddy was was two inches shorter than I am, and she is at least, at least 6'2", <laughs> 6'3", six, six, and she does wear six-inch heels. So, you know, Buddy and Shana, it'd be like, it, was like, it was like Andre and Mean Gene. It's just like... <laughs> he was a big climber. 
It's, uh... Speaking of climbers, you know what else I didn't know was going to be on the show, but was Darby Allen. Well. And they had a bizarre little segment with Darby and Switchblade where the build the build for this match next week was Switchblade was like, nah, you don't want to wrestle me. Let's not do it. Let's go, let's go party in the back. <laughs> I was like, that's the build to this match. <laughs> and then Darby was like, I don't, I don't buy the hype. Prove it next week. And he whispered something to Switchblade. And we don't even know what he whispered. Well, of course Darby doesn't buy the hype. He's been watching Jay White on AEW television since he debuted there. That is exactly right. what he said. He goes, you you were a, a multi-time IWGP heavyweight champion. You won the, uh, I think he said the G1, whatever he said. But he goes, what have you done since you've come here? Played with a cardboard cutout? And I was like, well. Well, hey, look, it has not basically, been all that yes. for for Jay White there, but losing Juice Robinson really did hurt the act, and then the fact that he's been languishing in what he's been doing, not that he hasn't been entertaining at times, but, like, come on here. <laughs> let's, let's do something with this dude. What did he say? Oh, you may have been in the Tokyo Dome twice. Yeah, not the G1. And we had, um, they're announcing a match. It's the House of Black versus Mark Briscoe and Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. My new favorite team ever. For Saturday. And uh, they are strongly... This will end with fire. I don't know if they're going to do the fire spot on Collision or if they're going to do the fire spot at the pay-per-view. But they are absolutely doing fire. It is... It is... It is. Uh, I mean, Maybe I they can it. throw my memories of the House of Black in there and then just, you know, light those on fire. This is not... It's amazing. Julia Hart is going to come out of... That foursome, the best at the end of the day. And I know this is probably going to end with Mark Briscoe going through fire because he's Mark Briscoe, but, like, no, no. I'd like to see Jeff Jarrett, Mark Briscoe, and Jay Lethal win. And then the uh, main event was Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher, which was absolutely fantastic for the uh, nine minutes before my DVR cut off. What happened to Tony telling us about the overrun? Luckily, they put it up on YouTube. So I was able to watch the end. And the uh, match was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Will is hurt. Think about that. So uh, the booking, if you want to call it that, is that uh, they had a fantastic match, and then Brian Danielson came out and looked at Will Ospreay. And you don't mean much more than that. They're going to do that match at the pay-per-view. Well, yeah, and they, they at least were very smart about that, having that air right in the background as they were staring each other down. Don't forget, coming up in St. Louis, I believe that it is, and, and hype the date and all that. You know, I got to say, this Brian Danielson is just driving me absolutely nuts. It's the hair, isn't it? No, it's the oh. fact that, like, he's doing all of his dream matches, and they're all awesome, but he's not winning anything. <laughs> it's like... The simplest thing to do if you really want to get everybody over is, like, win some big ones and then put people over. Instead, he skipped the win the big one part and just goes and puts everybody over. I think you just need to put that away because we were talking about that with him in WWE, and it's a great that you put Drew Gulak over, but then what? I, and I get it, but that's just what he's going to be now. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. I think it's my sobriety that keeps me going. Um, since I got clean and sober 15 years ago, it's it has put this kind of new shine on my life that I need to kick it into gear and continue growing and continue what I love to do, which is this wonderful business we're in and have some fun. And it's all about having fun. If you can't have fun at your job, then you don't really need to be in it. And I'm very good at what I do, so I love this business. And I just, uh, each time I go out there, it is an opportunity for me to be kind of a teacher for the youngins in the back because I'm very old school with a little new school attitude. So without the old, without the old school, there is no new school, right? So it's like all these people do the, all these impressive things all the time. And then what I like to do is completely different than that, and that's to tell a story it's very important to me because the fans kind of they have made us right so without the fans we're nothing and the, the fans that are uh going through their day and they might be having a a terrible day or whatever and they turn on the tv on AEW just to watch us it is my job to take them out of that day 
and entertain them, but make them feel something. That's the most important thing is to move somebody and to make them feel something. Because if you make them feel something, they're going to come back. And so that's that's kind of my my goal every time that I you know go out there. It's um, yeah, I get a lot ner- I get a lot more nervous at my age for some reason, which is really weird. Um, and I think they're good nerves, but and I've always been nervous, but really since I've turned 50, it's, it's like, every time I go out there, I'm just like, Oh my God, man, I can't mess up. I can't mess up because you know, there's people out there. They're going to be like, Oh, Dustin needs to retire. And I hate that. I don't want that. I want to kill it each time. I want to put on a banger and uh, tell a good psychological story for the fans to enjoy. I don't think I really need to prove myself anymore. But I think it's just an internal thing that I need to prove to myself, hey, I can still go out there and do this, right? But as far as proving to anybody else, I I believe people know how good I am and and that I can go out there and wrestle circles around some of the young ones, even still today. And um, we have some incredible talent. And I'm just trying to keep up. I'm just trying to keep, in a word, young, right? And it's very difficult when you're 54, almost 55, but just to throw in a, a couple of new things by evolving your characters and changing things up every once in a while, I'm good at that. And that gives me a little more life and gives me a little longer to kind of enjoy it, right? Before I need to switch it up again. And I think that's the key to my career is evolving. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Mm-hmm. If you listen to the uh, Brian and Vinny, Craig, Sean, Granny Show on Tuesday, first off, if you didn't, it's up at WrestlingObserver.com, and what in God's name are you waiting for? Really? That was actually a great show, if I do say so myself. Especially getting a chance to talk about... <laughs> anyway... <laughs> part of the show was a contest guess the surgery that Vinny recently got uh, <laughs> his psoriasis surgery and uh, I can I can alert you all that for the first time since his surgery he will be driving over here tonight that's a lot of sitting in the car he's got a donut done. and he's gonna be in a bad mood I think <laughs> So that'll be awful fun to review NXT with him in that mood. Although NXT was better, except for Lyra and Tatum. <laughs> Last week, it was like a three-way tie for the worst storyline in all of pro wrestling, all of which were on NXT. This week, it's far and away Lyra and Tatum. I wasn't even really that mad about uh, the beauty queen because she agreed to wrestle this week. And they're doing a storyline where if she beats Gigi Dolan... She's going to teach her how to be a lady. <laughs> that could be really funny. Yes. It could be really funny. So I actually cannot wait for that. <laughs> but even Dave, even Dave was like, this Lyra Tatum thing is the worst. <laughs> the absolute worst. So that's tonight, everybody. WrestlingObserver.com. You can also check out Video.F4WOnline.com. If you're listening to this show for free, that's our members-only area. And if you love audio shows well there's this is no joke 14,000 archive podcasts dating back to 2005 that should drive you nuts so sign up wrestlingobserver.com we're out of here thanks for listening we'll talk to you next time wrestling observer live